Joining me in studio now is Mr. Zaki Mohammed, Chairman of the Government Parliamentary Committee for Communications and Information. Thanks for joining me this evening. Yeah, now, what me. was your first reaction uh, when you heard about the extent of the services affected? Well, I initially thought it was uh, not going to be so extensive as it was initially thought. So, um, but I was quite surprised um, that you know it took uh, a, a few hours, in fact, many hours before services were restored. But, but thankfully, you know, Singtel basically put a lot of resources into this. And um, ID and Minister Jakob also had a first-hand um, look into how serious the um, situation was, and they restored most of it by today. Yeah, and I think a lot of uh, the people out there were also concerned and affected by this. Let's hear what yes. some of the reactions on Facebook uh, said. Amir, for instance, asked, why isn't there a backup facility to reroute all connections? Bob asks if the resilience review will affect the end user in terms of service level agreement and costs, for example. So, um, you know, what does the incident mean for communications resilience in Singapore? I think this incident shows that um, today we rely a lot on telecoms communications and um, such infrastructure is pretty much crucial, not just for business and consumers, but also for the economy as a whole. Um, we were fortunate that the incident happened in Bukit Panjang Exchange and not somewhere in the CBD. But what begs the question would then be, you know, resiliency and redundancy. You know, how could we uh, avoid such a situation in the future? But also at the same time, um, how do we ensure that if such uh, a situation happens, right? Uh, how do we recover quick, quickly, or even more quickly than what we could previously? What more do you think needs to be done in contingency planning? I think that's what you're trying to say, right? Yes, yeah. I think to a certain sense, I, I did announce that it's going to look into, it's going to, it's going to conduct this telecom audit framework in which um, I think today it's really looking to mobile services and I think it's, uh, we, we're also extending it into fixed line broadband, uh, fixed line services as well. And I think um, in, this, in such a situation, I think it's not just beyond um, the operations of each telecom operators, but look also into the overall um, telecom infrastructure network to see how we can enhance resiliency and redundancy. Today there is resiliency and redundancy built into I think the 22 exchanges that Singtel has. Um, I think OpenNet has got nine exchanges across Singapore. So that provides a bit of resiliency across the country. Mm. So therefore, when one exchange goes down, for example, in Bukit Panjang, you don't see um, other parts of the country go down. So there is that form of geographical resiliency in place. But technically speaking, um, you know, the, the failover or cutover could have been done more quickly. But based on what I'm hearing so far, I think, to be fair, let's wait for the investigations to come out. But um, you know, because the fibers were all burnt, and then you know, it, it took a bit more time to divert services. Yeah. Now, beyond uh, communications resilience, uh, the the extent of you know the disruption, clearly this is also an economic resilience sure. issue, right? Sure. Um, do you think there needs to be more oversight by the government? I think, to a certain sense, that's what IDA aims to do. I mean, with the audit framework, so it's not just about design and operations at the telecoms level but also how we look at the national concerns in terms of resiliency to ensure that our economy does not get impacted. So imagine this, right? if this had happened in the CBD area, two days shut down, I think there's, there's a lot more impact to the economy. Uh, but having said that, this is a good time, I suppose, for us to um, educate as well, you know, members of public and corporations as well, on how um, diversification of service providers could also help, means using a backup service provider such that if Singtel goes down, you have another service provider such as Starb or M1 to choose from. So that's, that's one area in which, you know, um, as, as a basic, um, I, I think, you know, this is where diversification could, look into, could be looked into and how, um, I suppose, business and consumers could have these conversations as well with service providers mm -hmm. on how better to um, you know, putting that resilience in place. Right. Uh, another co uh, question that's on top of everybody's mind is yes. uh, compensation. I see. How do you think that can be resolved? Um, no, certainly it's a, it, it, it's a matter of goodwill, I think, um, for, for Singtel to try to come back as quickly as possible. But to be fair to Singtel as well, um, you know, they, are, they are doing an impact study on uh, who's impacted, what's impacted, the extent of the damage um, and the impact to businesses as well. So I think there is um, a few things they probably need to look into and that's why the board of inquiries is so in place. But I hope that you know, for the sake of consumers and businesses impacted, they don't take too long to come back on you know, what's, what's on offer. All right, Mr. Saski, thanks for joining us this evening. Thank you so much. And that was Zaki Mohammed from the Government Parliamentary Committee for Communications and Information.